What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Gathering the Magic here, bringing you Splinterlands content whenever I upload something. I never stream, whether it's Tuesdays, Thursdays, or Sunday morning. So you can come by and say hello, but I'll be going through numbers on the market. And that's what we're going to talk about today, guys. So today is Sunday, May 19th, 2024. And this is episode number 11 already of the Splinterlands Market Watch. So we're going to go through numbers. We're going to go through how the tokens are doing, pack prices, uh, total SPS supply, and just a whole lot of information. So it's going to be a longer video, of course. So just sit back and relax and enjoy. Uh, hope you learn something and hope you see that there are some changes and surprises in the market. So let's start with SPS like we always do. So over the course of the last two weeks, there's been, you know, some up and down movement in SPS. But currently, as of this morning, SPS is sitting at 1.33 cents. As you can see, basically unchanged from where it was two weeks ago, just up slightly. Uh, same thing with vouchers. You know, vouchers are sitting at 2.81 cents. Uh, they were at 2.76 a couple weeks ago, so just up about 2%. And then DEC, um, this morning is the first time that I've noticed it above uh, 80 cents per thousand. You know, we have been bouncing around that 75 to 78 cent range. Uh, this morning we're up to 83.9 uh, cents per thousand. So right now we are up 13% from where we were two weeks ago. So hopefully that trend continues and we can get a little bit closer to PEG. So hopefully two weeks from now we can be you know, maybe in that 88 to 90 cent range, hopefully will continue to trend up. Uh, vouchers in circulation, uh, now that the promo event has ended, uh, vouchers are um, increasing in quantity again. So two weeks ago, we went from just under 11.4 million to just over 11.7 million. So we are gaining uh, just under 24,000 vouchers per day. Uh, as you guys know, they print 40,000 vouchers a day, so we're still burning about half the vouchers, uh, but still it's increasing at a pretty good rate. Uh, SPS burnt last few weeks has been pretty much at a standstill, you know, with uh, SPS being uh, so low and with um, DEC being not even close to PEG. So in the last two weeks, uh, we've burned just a little over 225,000 uh, SPS. Um, so we are burning about 16,000 SPS a day, so not hardly any much at all. And there you can see the uh, total SPS supply is still sitting at just under 2.9 billion tokens. Okay, pack prices. So the big news for the last two weeks is the Glint store with the jackpot chest. Uh, the one packs that they had uh, in them were beta packs. And as you guys know, they went through almost all 1,000 beta packs in the first day. So a lot of people got beta packs, just dumped them on the market to just get a little bit of money, and that pushed the price down. They were selling about 15 to 18 bucks, and <clears throat> they pushed it down. I think the lowest I saw was somewhere around the $6 range. Uh, so currently, um, beta packs are still selling for under $9. But if you look at how many were opened in the last two weeks, uh, this is pretty much just in the last few days. Uh, so the total supply of beta packs has gone from uh, just under 22,000 to just over 20,000. So there has been uh, over 1,600 packs that have been opened. So there's been a lot of movement, a lot of sales, but there's also been a lot of uh, people that have opened beta packs over the last two weeks. So curious to see if um, when we do the next market watch in two weeks, if the total number of beta packs drops under 20,000, which will be a big move. Um, as you can see for the other packs, alphas dropped um, only about 12, but still 12 is a big number for uh, alpha packs. <clears throat> Usually people just have them, hold them, don't do anything with them. You know, they'll list them on the market. They don't really sell very quickly. So the fact that we opened uh, 12 packs in the last two weeks, you know, is a pretty big number as far as alpha is concerned. Um, the rest of the pack prices you can see are pretty much the same. Um, a lot of them have dipped slightly. Uh, Chaos Legion um, dipped down to 46 cents um, as of this morning. I think it may have bounced back up a little bit, maybe to 48 or 49, but still for the most part staying right in that 50 cent range per pack. Um, for my $10 account, I've been um, buying and flipping a lot of Chaos Legion packs just to get a couple cents here and there uh, to get some funds for that account. I think I might do a separate video on that later. 
and show you guys um, how much I actually made in three weeks and the cards I was basically able to buy uh, for that $10 account. So we'll do that in a separate video. Uh, the one pack that's really holding strong and actually going up in value is um, Rebellion. You know, Rebellion has been holding right at that $3 range and it's still trading <clears throat> at $3.25 a pack. And we, when we go through at the end of the video, the Rebellion numbers and card sales, you will see um, the cards are really, really holding their value. Uh, as far as sales go for Rebellion, um, in the last 14 days, we've sold 7,268 packs. <clears throat> so just over 500 packs per day. So the cards are really holding their value, but not very many are selling off the market. So the number of uh, <clears throat> Rebellion packs that are circulating uh, is just over 85,000, but most of those are on mage wagons. The ones that are actually available for sale on the market is about 8,500. So not very many packs selling and not very many on the market, but the value is holding strong. Okay, so now let's get over to the sets. And of course, let's start with alpha like we always do. So looking at alpha cards, uh, your cheapest common <clears throat> is the Fire Beetle at 60 cents. You can see the numbers here in the three to 4,000 range for the commons. Let me just go by commons. Let's just go by regular. So the most expensive common is still the one that was bought out, you know, a month or so ago, the Silver Shield Warrior. I, at one point, this was listed for over $40, but it's down to 464. A uh, more realistic price for him is probably 60 cents. So he's kind of one, one of the uh, lower price standard cards in the set. So realistically, the highest uh, price card should probably be the Cold, Cobalt Miner at 175. But like I said, because of that buyout that happened a few weeks ago, he's sitting at 464. For the rares, <clears throat> Frozen Soldier is your cheapest rare at 96 cents. You can see there's usually a couple thousand of each of these. Up into your most expensive rare is Ulrich at $8.75. Looking at epics, of course we have a shorter list here. Your cheapest epic is $3.62 for the Fire Demon. These are right around 1,000, looks like 1,000 to 1,200 print run. Most expensive, Serpent of the Flame at $9.82. And for your legendaries, Angel of Light is the cheapest at $28.77. Most expensive is Spirit of the Forest at 250 And as you can see, look at the numbers on the market, six or less of all these legendary alpha cards. Looking at the gold foil commons, actually have gold foil common under 20 bucks. So there is a Rexy on the market for $17.80. And the most expensive common is another one that they just listed it as high as they could because it's the only one on the market, the Cobalt Miner for just under $400. Uh, same thing with the Minotaur Warrior. He's at 145, but he's more of a basic one. He's another one that should be in the 20 to $25 range. Um, so if you take out those two outliers, really the most expensive common, you're looking at about 75 bucks for the Shaman and the Healer. Looking at the rares, uh, Frozen Soldier at 86. Most expensive Haunted Spirit. A Haunted Spirit is a very good rare, but I don't think it's a $1,000 good, especially compared to the other cards. But as you can see, most all of these are just single copies. So when they're single copies, you know, they can list them for whatever they want. And then going to Epics, cheapest Epic. And this is actually a pretty decent list. There were a few weeks where there were no Gold Foil Alpha Epics. So you've got a handful of them on the market now. Cheapest is the Naga Warrior at $300. Most expensive is the Air Elemental at $999. And no gold foil legendaries for Alpha. And then looking at promo cards. So you've got the Dragon Whelp at $875 for the common. Neb Sini, the rare, at $34.99. Royal Dragon Archer, epic, at $350. And Shinlo, the legendary, at $1,688.48. So the gold foil versions Dragon Whelps at $99, Nebseni at $7840, and Royal Dragon Archer at $42069. 
So as you can see, once again, there are no gold foil uh, legendaries for sale for the last month. And uh, the gold foil epic promo cards, first time I've seen that one. Uh, previously, two weeks ago, it was not uh, available for sale. So here you can see where the prices were two weeks ago and where they are currently. And now let's move on to beta. So, so not a whole lot of movement in beta. Um, like I said, the packs were available in chess. Probably quite a few were opened, but it didn't really have a huge, huge impact on prices. So looking at beta cards, um, we're looking at core and reward. Uh, your cheapest common is four cents. If you notice the difference in the, uh, the print runs, it's because some of these are the reward cards and the other ones are the base. So if we take out the reward cards, um, you can see the core set commons are usually, you know, 15 to 20,000, somewhere in that range. But then when you throw in the reward cards, you know, some of those are in the 40 to 50,000 range. So that's why there is such a huge difference in some of the numbers for the commons. But Spineback Wolf is the cheapest at four cents. Your most expensive common, let's just look at the regulars, is Rexy at 49 cents. So here are your commons. A lot of great cards. Okay, so let's look at the rares. So your rares, your cheapest one is 21 cents for the Gremlin Blaster. Moving down to you guys can probably guess the most expensive card, Ulrich Stormbringer. Now, take a note of this. It's $4.81. Um, he was $8 a couple weeks ago. So it's kind of come down in price. And I think before that, he was around the $10 range. So if you're looking to pick up an Ulrich, this might be a good time at $4.81. Um, Cerberus, another good uh, card, is $1.85. Chicken, $1.30. And you can see, you can pick up some beta summoners for under a dollar. Let's just real quick look at the summoners. If you're looking for affordable um, summoners, especially if you play in wild, this is, the, this is the place to look. Of course, can't use them in modern. But still, if you want to kind of expand your wild deck, um, Alric, of course, is a little bit more pricey, but still. Uh, Zintar, Malric, Tyrus, these are pretty decent playable cards, and they're all, you know, 77 cents or cheaper, so... Just wanted to point that out. Good deal on the beta summoners. And of course, you also need fewer of them um, at lower levels. You know, of course, you do need 115 for the rare, just like normal. But if you're not worried about maxing them out, you only want to get them to level four or five. You need a lot less copies than you do of some of the newer cards. Okay, so let's go on now to the epics. So your cheapest epic is Divine Sorceress at 89 cents. Moving up to the most expensive is Xander Foxwood at $12.96. And then for your legendaries, cheapest beta legendary is $4.36 for Zalfren Afrit. Moving up to Valnamore had a little bit of a bump. He's up to $84.15. Now, a couple weeks ago, um, I had noticed that he had dr dropped down to $75.00. Previously, he was up to 150 like a month or so ago. So he came down 50% in value, rebounded slightly, but still from where he was, um, still a pretty good deal. And kind of surprising that he went up in price slightly, especially with um, all the beta packs open. I'm sure there was probably um, a handful of um, those that came to the market. So let's look at beta promos now. So for your promo cards... Uh, the one card that really did uh, dip in value, and it had been pretty consistent for the last couple of months, is Del 1 Dragon Scale. Consistently in that 75 to 77 cent range, um, he's currently down to 50 cents. Let's see how many of him there actually are at that. So there are a decent amount of him at 50 to 58 cents. So you can pick up a few of them. Like I said, this is the one promo card that had been pretty consistent. So he's at 50 cents. Draggling Bowman is at $0.37, cents. Fiendish Sharpie at $2.22, and then your three legendary cards, Red Dragon at $18.55, Archmage Arius at $12.37.50, and Prince Julian, two copies, $4,870. 
So you can see the prices here. So the one that really changed for the legendaries was uh, Prince Julian going from 7300 to 4870. Um, the pr other promo cards pretty much stayed the same, like I said, with the exception of the common, you know, going down from 77 cents to 50. Okay, let's look at gold foils now. So your cheapest beta gold foil card is $1.99 for the Silver Shield Archers. I'm going up to your most expensive common is the Sea Monster at $24.75. So you can see, even for these commons, look at the low numbers. I mean, Goblin Sorcerer, there's 49, but a lot of these are in the, the teens or 20s. So very few of them on the market. Let's look at rares. So now you jump up to $13 for Stone Splitter Orc. Up to, can you guess the most expensive? No, it is not Alric. It is actually Flame Imp at $100. So Flame Imp is 100 Serpentine Soldier, 95 And then we get to Alric at $85. Those are your gold foil beta rares. Your Epics Phantom Soldier is at $64. Going up to Fire Demon is the most expensive at $4,000. There's two copies of that. Uh, next to that, the next two expensive ones are the Mischievous Mermaid and the Air Elemental, both at $599. And then for your Beta Legendaries, uh, Lightning Dragon at $399. Two copies on the market. Now you can see how there's just a handful of each of these on the marketplace. And the most expensive is, once again, Valnamore at $3,888. Um, also that same price is Ruler of the Seas. Uh, Cryptmancer, $1,499. Uh, another key card, Kraken and Lord of Darkness sitting at $999. Uh, same as Black Dragon and Lord Ariana. So a lot of people trying to sell them right around that thousand dollar mark for a gold foil legendary beta card okay what else do we need to talk about for beta oh the promo card so let's look at the gold foil promos so gold let's go to promos so delwin is sitting at 1584 so he is down big time from a couple weeks ago when he was around 30 bucks um, the rare promo dropped to 40. The epic promo is actually on the marketplace. There hasn't been a fiend to Sharpie in the last couple weeks. There's now a single copy for $99. And Red Dragon, you can see, is $999. And that is the only legendary gold foil promo on the marketplace. There's not a copy of Prince Julian or Archmage Arius. Okay, so now let's move on to Untamed. So let's just look at the core and reward cards, regular foil. We'll start, of course, with the commons. Uh, once again, a lot of the uh, base cards, the non-gold foils, are not going to be a whole lot different in price over two weeks. They don't change a whole lot day-to-day uh, -day or week-to-week, -week, at least for like commons, rares, epics. Uh, sometimes you'll get an outlier or a strange buyout. Um, as you can see, the most expensive card is Serpentine Spy at 20 cents. Uh, Failed Summoner about a month, month and a half ago was sitting at 90 cents. And then it was paired with Serpentine Spy as the two most um, expensive uh, commons from Untamed. He's dipped down to 11 cents. I think I might start picking up some more of him at that price because that's the lowest I've seen him in quite a while. So those are your commons, uh, your rares. Sitting at six cents for the Goblin Chariot. So you can see the cards here in the print run. How many are in circulation? Look at this shield bearer for 30 cents. Unbelievable. And then your most expensive card is your Summoner Bordas. Very useful card with that negative one magic sitting at 65 cents. Going to the epics, cheapest epic, Torhillo the Frozen at 27 cents. A lot of cards in the 30 to 40 cent range. Most expensive, Thunderbird at $1.59. And now looking at your legendary cards. Cheapest legendary and untamed is Glorodax Guardian at $1.35.
Ancient Lich, a dollar thirty-nine. I remember when I first started playing in July of 2021. This card was in the twenty-five to twenty-nine dollar range. Now it's a dollar thirty-nine. And then some of the summoners you can see are right around that ten dollar mark. Mimosa at eight fifty, Chanceus at ten seventy-eight. And now the main cards: uh, Kron sitting at eighteen. Uh, Lear at $19, Cornelius at $29, Llama at $39, Yoden at $45, and look at this, Kitty down to under $50, bucks. $45.36 $46 for Kitty. So just two weeks ago, Kitty was sitting at $71, so it's gone from $71 down to under $46. Uh, Llama has actually gone up slightly over the last two weeks, was $30, now it's $39. Yoden down just a little bit. Same thing with Kron, but the, the big drop was Kitty. So just wanted to point that out to you guys. Now let's go over the, um, the promos, and then we'll look at the gold foils. So your promo cards. You've got the Halfling Alchemist at $249. So that one continues to fall. It was around $4 two weeks ago, so down to $250. So that's a big drop there. Uh, the Chain Golem actually spiked in price. Um, Probably was undersold or undervalued here at $7. Now it's back to just under $27. And the Mighty Dricken is still sitting um, at $769. So there are your copies there. Just one copy of the Mighty Dricken. So the one that's very volatile uh, week to week is the Chain Golem. I've seen it as high as the 40s, then last week down under 10, now back to 27. So this one bounces around a lot. Okay, and since we're already here, let's take a look at the gold foil promos. So Halfling Alchemist, just under 50, and the Chain Golem at 150. No gold foil Mighty Drickens. And now let's look at the other gold foil cards. So let's look at the regular Corrin Reward. So for your commons, your cheapest gold foil common is sitting at 48 cents for the Barking Spider. Going up to, kind of surprisingly, it's not the Serpentine Spy. That's the most expensive common. The most expensive gold foil common is Sandworm, sitting at $9.49. And another one that's kind of an outlier is the Cursed Slime Ball at $7.52. So I think these two are kind of the outliers, um, at least based on the regular foils. Uh, Serpentine Spy should be the most expensive. I actually picked him up, uh, I believe, a week or so ago when he was under three, so I was happy with that. Uh, need to get a gold foil summoner if I can get him for under three dollars. I think that's a pretty good buy, so I think I might do that shortly. Uh, looking at the rares, um, the cheapest rare is actually a summoner, and not a bad summoner at that. Pyre is sitting at two dollars and forty cents for a gold foil summoner. Uh, Contessa at 275, Mother Kala at 292, or the other summoners, Wizard of Eastwood at 455, Drake of Arnick at 640. Look at the shield bearer, gold foil for five dollars. And then your most expensive, once again, just a very strange outlier because it's the only copy on the market. $139 for True Speaker. Now, other than that card, your most expensive rare, right around 10 bucks for Chimer Princess. So, once again, if you have the only copy of something, you can basically name your price. That's why that card is so expensive. Looking at the epics, your cheapest epic, uh, Headhunter at $14.50. As you can see, how we get into the low print range of just a couple 300 for the epics. Most expensive is Kretsch, sitting at $40. And then for your legendaries, the best of the best. Surprisingly, the cheapest gold foil legendary is actually Kron. That's kind of amazing to me. He's not the worst card or least valuable of all the legendaries, but he is the cheapest at $129. Uh, moving on up to Kitty. So Kitty had um, a big drop in the regular foil price, but the gold foil price pretty much held steady. So she's at $1,535. Uh, Almio at just under $1,500. Yoden just under $600. Uh, Llama sitting at $580. So let's take a look at where they were a couple weeks ago. 
So just a couple weeks ago, yep, Kitty at 1539, so pretty much unchanged. You know, Llama dropped about $100. Yoden was the big drop. I remember Yoden selling a month, month and a half ago. People were asking 4500 to 5500 for a Yoden. Now they're asking for basically one-tenth of that. You know, they're asking for just under 600 uh, Kron is about half price for where he was two weeks ago, uh, 129 Almio down a little bit, like I said, 1499 Magnor dropped about half from 530 to 285 and Robo Dragon Knight from 480 to 449.40. So some of the gold foils are pretty much holding their price, but some of the ones that were just ridiculously overpriced like Yoden have come down to a more reasonable level, but I think this might actually be a little bit too low. Usually Kitty and Llama are, are pretty, or Kitty and Yoden are pretty close in price. So right now Yoden is, um, you know, just a little bit over a third of the price of a Kitty. And then we already went over the uh, the promo gold foils, so now we can move on to the next set, which is dice. So let's take a look at regular foils for dice, starting with the common, such a small set. And once again, there's not going to be a lot of movement or a lot of changes in the price um, to dice. You can see where the prices were two weeks ago and where they are now. Um, the key thing to point out as far as dice goes is the rares of the summoners. And about a month ago, <clears throat> Mylor had dipped down, I believe the cheapest was $1.87. Then two weeks ago, he rebounded to $2.95. Now he's at $3.25. So if you wanted to pick up a Mylor under two bucks, uh, kind of missed your chance. Uh, now he's sitting at $3.25. Personally, I don't think he's going to move up a whole lot more. Maybe he goes up to $3.50. I doubt if it hits $4, but we'll see. You know, the market's unpredictable, just my guess. Uh, looking at the epics, 40 to 78 cent range there. And for your legendaries, your cheapest legendary is 358. The most expensive two continue to be Kralis and Epona. Epona just under $33. And Kralis just um, over 15. I know this had been a 20 ish dollar card, so might be a little bit undervalued for Kralis. You can see the price is there. Um, so opponent dipped down from 45 to 33. So that's probably the big movement there. Uh, looking at the gold foils, 55 cents to 99 cents for your gold foil commons. 245 to look at this, only $13 for a gold foil mylar and 10.50 for a gold foil Lorne Shine. So if you're looking for two. Uh, summoners that are going to give you that 10% bonus. <coughs> very playable, very good cards. I think these are great prices. If you can pick up a gold for a Lorna for 1050 and Mylor for 13. So good value there in my opinion. Uh, Epics, 1531 for Grenadier, 1683 for the Mistress. And then for your legendary cards, actually a pretty good uh, selection of legendary cards for this small of a set. Uh, how do you pronounce that? Caledum at $148.13 and then Epona at just under $2,000. Once again, the only copy on the market. You can see there's only 29 in circulation, so they can basically name their price. Very, very low print run on all these under 100. Um, look at this, under you know 38 copies, 48 copies, 29 copies. So very valuable cards there. I think that does it for dice. Very small set. Same thing with Orb. We'll go through Orb pretty quickly since that is a very small set. And there is basically the entire set right there. So you can see the commons going from six cents to 14. Are your rares from 28 cents to 64? The one big drop in price are the two epics. Um, these had been $3 range pushing four. They're both under two now. So if you're looking to pick these up, both great cards, you know, both Little League. Uh, the Dwarven Wizard is actually a neutral, you know, so he does magic damage for neutral, so that's great. Um, under two bucks, I think, is a good value. And, of course, the Mermaid he Healer with the Triage is another great card. So you can grab these now for under two bucks, where, like I said, they've been in the three three fifty range. So good value there. And then for your legendary cards, you've got the Minotaur Warlord, just under 10. Lord of Fire at basically 12. And your corrupted Pegasus at 1855. 
So you can see the prices pretty much unchanged from where they were a couple weeks ago with the exception of the epics. And now let's look at the gold foil versions. So for your gold foil commons, you're looking at 240 to 365 for the commons, 1475 up to $28 for the rare. Mermaid Healer, down to $59.50. So what was Mermaid Healer? Oh yeah, I think that was the one, it was one of the two, they were asking $500 uh, last time, or maybe it's still, oh, well, she's probably the cheap one at $82.80, so now she's down to uh, $59.50, and then the other one, the Dwarven Wizard, still asking for almost $500, and then your copies of your Gold Foil Legendaries, Minotaur Warlord at $12.99, Lord of Fire at $1,353.75, and a single copy of Corrupted Pegasus for just under two grand, $1,999. So that wraps up Orb, and now we move on to the modern sets. And we start, of course, with Chaos Legion. So let's just look at the core and reward cards. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about here. I just want to show the page just so... We can have a record for future reference on the print run, how many will be burned and combined going forward. But as you can see, for the reward cards in that, still over a million to a million and a half of each of these. Um, a penny going on up to um, the one change is actually the high end. So the Scalpel Hireling had been the high end card uh, for the commons. He'd been at 10 cents, 14 cents. Now he's dropped down to five. So if you're looking to max any of these out, let's just look at max copies, 400 of each. See if it updates it. You can get a lot of these for like under four bucks, under three bucks. There we go. Some of the reward cards, you know, a dollar eighty, dollar eighty one, Pelicor Bandit, dollar eighty six. So some great cards. Um, even some of the newer reward cards, like the Vampire Bat, they didn't print as many of those. You know, instead of, you know, over a million, there's under half a million. You know, still a huge, huge supply. But still to be able to get those for basically under half a cent each is um, a pretty good deal. And then the most expensive one, common, is just under 20 bucks for Scavo, you know, sitting at that five cent range. Okay, so then looking at the rares. Cheapest rare, two cents. Scroll down. A lot of great cards. If you can, you know, if you need them for your decks, if you haven't got them yet, it's still a great time to get them. Uh, especially for the summoner. So you've got General Sloan at 11 cents. 11 cents for a summoner. Will he drop down under 10 in two weeks? I think he may. Thaddeus Brood at 19 cents. Tarsa at 21. Obsidian at 28. And Kelly is sitting at 30 cents. Your epic cards, Dax Paragon at nine cents. Remember that he is the cheapest at nine cents, and Magi of Chaos at thirty cents. And then looking at your legendary cards, Ifrit Rising at forty-five cents is your cheapest. A lot of the fiends sitting around fifty cents, so you can max out a fiend for about five six bucks. Crazy. And look at all these great cards for under a dollar. So if you don't have uh, some of these cards yet, now's a great time to pick them up. Um, that's going to be next on my radar for my $10 account. Now that I'm able to make a couple bucks here and there uh, flipping packs, I definitely want to pick up at least a single copy of all the Chaos Legion um, legendary cards. I did pick up a Jim um, Murray, is what I call him. I like him. Um, 65 cents was a great deal. Um, I believe I have Corpse Fiend. I want to get the other Fiends. If I don't have Chaos Dragon and River Hellendale, I definitely want to get those. Spirit Hoarder, just so many great cards. Bacjera even, under two bucks. So let's take a look at the uh, Legendary Summoners. So Grandmaster Wraith, basically three bucks. Quicks at 315. Astral Entity at 330. Conqueror Yasik at 363. Look at this, Lily, under four bucks. $3.86. And then the top two, and it's been that way for quite a while, Pasibilis at $6.80 and Immortalis at $6.98. So now if you look at your promo cards. 
So Archimus the Bear at 14 cents. Vrus at 19 cents. Osher Costantia just under $11. Dr. Blight has uh, bounced back, so I wanted to point that out. Um, the two weeks prior, I believe Dr. Blight was down to $11. That was the low. Now he's back up to almost 20. So he's almost doubled in price from where he was at that low a month ago. Um, Zerial's basically unchanged. Uh, Waka went from 175 a couple weeks ago down to 119. And Lux went from basically 245 to just under 230 at $229. Um, so as you can see, and there's actually eight copies of Lux on the marketplace. Since we're already here, let's take a look at the gold foil versions. So Archimus the Bear, under a buck for gold foil Archimus. So good price there. Bruce, $1.85. Oh, sure, it's $78.20. Uh, gold foil Dr. Blight for an even $100. Uh, gold foil Zerial at 149. There is actually a gold foil Lux Vega. It's been a long, long time since there's one been listed for sale. There is a single copy for $1,200, and two copies of a gold foil Waka Spirit Blade starting at $2,000. So as you can see, the gold foil prices from a couple weeks ago. Now we'll go over um, the regular gold foils. From the core and reward cards so looking at your commons look at this your cheapest gold foil common is 13 cents i thought when it was 18 to 20 cents that was kind of pushing the low boundary nope we've gone down to 13 can we hit 10 cents for a gold i think if we hit 10 cents for a gold foil common i'm buying as many as i can even if i already have them that is just ridiculously low i remember when i first started playing like i said in 2021 um, the gold, the cheapest gold foil commons were usually in the three to four dollar range, so we have just come down huge from then. Um, your most expensive gold foil common is nice even dollar for the Scavo hireling, but still, if you're looking for gold foils to get that um, that 10% bonus, now is a great time to pick up some of these commons and get that bonus. Uh, gold foil rares, um, for a while it was right around dollar, 90 cents to a dollar was the floor. Uh, now we're down to 68 cents for the cheapest, the Gargoyle Devil. Moving on up to, of course, your most expensive ones are going to be your Summoners. Actually, Tarsa is the cheapest at $1.69, and Kelly the most expensive at $2.85. So right around 2 bucks for a lot of gold foil Summoners. So once again, prices may dip a little bit lower, but these are great prices to get that get that bonus for your, uh, for your deck. And then gold foil Epics, one of the things that I targeted for land... Um, look at this. Magi of Necrosi is the most expensive regular foil, but he's the cheapest gold foil. The most expensive gold foil is Dax Paragon, which is your cheapest regular foil. So I thought that was kind of funny how those two are just juxtaposed. You know, they're just, you know, they're the opposite. You know, Dax should be the cheapest. He should be 345 and Magi should be uh, 569. Uh, the other card I wanted to point out too is Tidebiter for the longest time had been sitting right about that $15 mark and he's dropped down to a more realistic price of $5.64. But still, great time to pick up um, some of these. I know I have a lot of plots that use Life and Dragon. So it's nice to see Jin Chihuahua under 4 bucks and Prisma Prismologist the same under 4 I might start picking up some more of these slowly because I've got a lot of pl plots to, uh, to fill. I need to do a video on that as well so I can show you guys all the land plots I've picked up in the last couple months. Uh, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that. Uh, my original goal for land was I wanted five plots, and I am way, way, way above that. Okay, so now looking at the legendaries, we might uh, drop under 20 bucks um, by the time the next market watch rolls around. We're sitting at 2050 for the Scorch Fiend. So that is your cheapest uh, gold foil legendary for Chaos Legion. Uh, most expensive, I don't know if you guys remember, I think it was two weeks ago. Don't think I have it marked down. Oh, here it is. Gold Foil Legendary two weeks ago was the Fungus Fiend at just under $200. So that was the outlier. Yep, Fungus Fiend is back down to where it belongs. Where is Fungus Fiend? Fungus Fiend is, I don't even see it. So maybe it did sell at that price. But now your most expensive uh, gold foil legendary is $75 for Pisiblis and Quicks. 
Um, if you wanted to get a gold foil lily, it's just under 33. So I think that is it for Chaos Legion. So now let's move on to Rift Watchers, and then we'll wrap up with Rebellion. So looking at Rift Watchers. Cheapest one, like I said, there's not going to be a lot of movement here. Just want to take a screenshot, you know, so we can see the prices going for or the print runs going forward. Uh, one cent to 11 cent for your commons, for your rares. A slight rebound, rebound in price for Queen of Crows. Uh, she was like 58 cents a couple weeks ago. She pretty much is the most expensive one and sits right in that um, 80 cent to a dollar range. Uh, Cabalist has shot up. Um, it used to be the top three were Queen, Tinderlock, and Corsair Bosson. Uh, people really love this Amplify, so that is the reason that it is uh, moved into the number two spot. But all these cards are pretty much um, just great, great rares for the set. Looking at Epics, which are the Summoners, uh, the one thing I wanted to point out for the longest time, Ilthane was sitting in the four to five dollar range. Uh, a couple weeks ago, it dropped down around three. Now it is almost under two bucks, so two dollars and nineteen cents for an Ilthane. So great price to pick that card up. This is the lowest that I've seen. So if you haven't picked one up yet, great time to do so. And then looking at your legendaries, one thing that kind of surprised me is Rune Mancer has always been kind of you know the cheapest one in the set. Did not expect him to drop under two dollars, and now he is actually at eighty-eight cents. So he is by far the cheapest legendary in Rift Watchers. And even though we've had, you know, a lot of uh, lower prices in the market, two cards are still kind of holding their value as Immolation and Inevitable, uh, both sitting at $17. So now let's look at the gold foils. Uh, your cheapest common, $0.27 cents for the Lycan Beast, up to $1.93 for the Ash Mirage. And then for your gold foil rares, a dollar for Sudai Shaman up to Queen of Crows. Um, once again, this card was usually seven, eight, eight fifty for a gold foil. Now it's down just under five. Um, Corsair Bosan, another one is usually five, six dollars plus. So some of these gold foil rares, um, if you don't have them in your collection, you can now pick these up for you know the two to three dollar range for most of them. So especially the higher end ones and even Tinderlock under two bucks, I think is a great buy if you don't have the gold foil version and would like to add one to your collection. Gold foil epics, which are your summoners, 446 for Aquatus up to uh, Ilthane. Once again, this was a 40-ish dollar card. It's now under 20, sitting at 17.95. And for your legendaries, um, even though the Rune Mancer is the cheapest regular card, he is not the cheapest gold foil. That is the Ancient Redwood at just under 30 bucks. And your most expensive is Inevitable, still holding a very respectable price of $250. So there are your gold foil legendaries for Rift Watchers. And let's finish this up with Rebellion. So let's just look at the core cards for Rebellion. So we'll put this on the screen. Okay, so... Not a lot of movement, once again, in the regular cards, uh, with a couple of exceptions. Your common cards, you're sitting at four cents. Up to your common summoners. Uh, most expensive is Prunda at 30 cents. Looking at the rares, uh, your cheapest rare. Decent price, actually, for rares, when you're sitting at 20 cents for your cheapest rare, and that is in a new set. Uh, so 17 cents for the demon, and then quickly move up to 20 cents plus, all the way up to Moxian Rebel, um, holding very strong. So Moxian Rebel, uh, a couple weeks ago, I believe it was the most expensive rare at 205. So it's gone from 205 to 340. So a very very nice increase in that card. Um, Moxian Rebel and Avena of the Wolf are usually the two most expensive rares from the set, and they're usually pretty close in price. As you can see, Moxian Rebel had a very nice increase. And then looking at your epics, uh, $1.16 for Red Worm Hatchling on up to Captain Fellblade. Uh, Captain Fellblade as well, holding around that $45 uh, price range. And then your legendary cards, and we'll get into this more, especially when we get into the gold foils. Uh, your cheapest is $4.50 up to uh, the newest kit on the block, Venka the Vile is sitting still at $24. 
So if we look at some of the top cards, how they've gone in price over the last couple weeks, um, Kai two weeks ago was sitting right around about 1250 has dipped down under eight. So Kai has really gone down in price. Uh, a cane has also had a dip going from just over 19 to just over $16. Uh, Rage pretty much holding steady 1661 two weeks ago now 1549 so not a whole lot of movement there uh, dark actually went up uh, from 1589 to 1759 currently and then venka was 26 bucks when it first came out a couple weeks ago still holding pretty strong at 24 so let's go now over the gold foil versions so your cheapest gold foil common $1.24, which is very respectable for a new set. Usually when you have a new set that comes out, especially after a few months, you know, they get dumped on the market, price is tanked. But I think a huge um, impact of the uh, mage wagons is holding these prices. Not a lot of people are selling them. They're staking them on their wagons. Most expensive common is 514 for Prunda. So then looking at the rares, uh, your cheapest gold foil rare, you're seeing at 450 for the Thanalorian Archer. And we're moving on up to, it is actually not Moxine Rebel, it is Avina the Wolf. So these two have switched in price. So maybe that means the Moxine Rebel gold foil is a good deal since the regular version is, you know, above four bucks. But Avina the Wolf is the most expensive rare right now at 21.52. Looking at the gold foil epics, uh, the range is pretty much tightened, so you're looking at $23 for the cheapest, up to 30, just under $33 for the most expensive. But once again, look at the low liquidity, all of these under 10 on the marketplace, and only a single copy of Polis, Gold Foil Epic. So the people that have them are not selling them. And now if you really want to be surprised, look at the legendaries. So this is all the Gold Foil legendaries in Rebellion that are on the marketplace. So we'll let the screen load so you can see the correct artwork. This is it, guys. These are all the gold foil legendaries. One copy of all of these, two Rush, three Endura, two Bera, two, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, two Norara, and four Lord Thanalor. Everything else, they're either not on the market or only a single copy. So how does that look from two weeks ago? So looking at the gold foil legendaries, um, Kai, two weeks ago, was $240. There's not one on the market. There hasn't been an Akane on the market, at least that I've seen um, in the last month. Uh, Rage is actually a little bit lower. Went from $192 to right around $160. Darg went from uh, $228.50. He's now the most expensive at $399. But once again, he's the only copy, so people can ask what they want. Uh, Rush. Basically stayed the same right around the $200 mark. Uh, Nalara dipped down from 180 to 135 And then Venka has um, gone up from 258 to just under $300. But once again, just look at just the low, low liquidity. And it's just amazing because, like I said, this is a brand new set. You know, people are opening packs even though the pack sales are slow. You know, there's been, what, 900,000 packs that have been bought almost a million packs and there's just nothing on the market. So I'm very curious to see what this does um, a few months from now, you know, when the conflicts are over, are people gonna, you know, of course, take them off their wagons, um, dump them on the market, or the price is gonna go a little bit lower. I think that's what's gonna happen, but at least for now, for the foreseeable future, these cards are gonna be very, very hard to get and they are gonna hold their value. So if you're someone that does uh, pack openings and wants to sell these on the market, you might be able to get a decent price if you are willing to sell. Okay, and let's round this out with promos. So let's just look at your promo cards. Let's look at the regular first. So Henchling Enforcer was a dollar sixty two weeks ago. He's down to a dollar eighteen. Uh, Grimbarden Smith is down to three seventy four. Uh, he was sitting at four fifty three, so he's drifted a little bit lower. Uh, same thing for Manoroth. He was at uh, 39.50. He's down to 37. And Baron Fiat is down to 9.20. Looking at the gold foil versions compared to where they were a couple weeks ago, um, the gold foil henchling enforcer, just a small decrease from 10.18 to 9.48. 
Uh, Baron Fiat has gone from 125. He actually went up to 135. Your Grimbarden Smith went from just basically 38 bucks to just under 34. And then Mantroth from 375 to 295. So the one that really dropped was Mantroth, dropping down to just under 300 bucks. But once again, very low uh, numbers for these, especially even the rares. You know, I can see the gold foil legendaries, you know, just being under 10 for each of them on the market. But just kind of surprised that there's this few uh, gold foil uh, rares on the marketplace. So I think that will do it, guys. I think that wraps up all the information uh, for the market watch for this week. Thank you again for staying with me on this long video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already and enjoy this type of content. Um, next week, I will be doing uh, episode two of my Splinterlands land market watch where we'll be looking at land prices and um, basically the five cheapest prices um, for each rarity and each type. So stay tuned for that next week. Hope you guys are doing well. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those in the comment section below. And as always, stay the course, keep on forging, have fun. I'll see you again soon. Take care.